Some people call it peak. Others call it the GOAT. What do I call it? One of the most popular, not anime, but shows that have aired in my generation. Even if you spite anime as a whole while tossing a bunch of manga into a fire, there's a very good chance you have heard the name Eren Yeager. Eren Yeager. And soon, the anime is ready to finally close the last page of his chapter. I am excited. Many people are excited. Manga readers who've already read the ending are... Okay, what the fuck happened? So, the word around the block is that a lot of people did not like the ending of Attack on Titan. No spoilers, so please don't click off the video for of God. I don't know what happened, but seeing how some people react, it's interesting to say the least because of just how received the show is. This is why before the ending finally hits, I wanted to write and record this beginning part of the script before the finale actually, you know, airs. Going through the journey of Attack on Titan one last time in my own personal time I spent watching as an anime only. It is around 2015 and at this point in time I'm not quite an anime watcher yet. Sure, I would watch my Pokemons, my Dragon Balls and Shaft, but the entire world of anime was unknown to me. Somehow through some way I caught one of One Punch Man and after finishing that I somehow instantly got transferred into watching Attack on Titan. The entire world was a simple dystopia confined to a set of few walls that contained humanity for their own safety, protecting them from the titans that roamed outside the walls. Going in, I didn't really expect much, let alone for it to become one of my favorite series. Setting the pace and theme with the opening scene, but not doing anything new, I was hooked. But I also knew what to expect going forward and how the show was going to be handled. That was... until I didn't. I think we can cover everything we need to of the earlier seasons by simply discussing one character, Aaron Yeager. Aaron Yeager. Aaron Yeager. Shut the fuck up. A main shonen protagonist starts off how we all expect a normal one to behave given his introduction and circumstances. At first, this was the simple yet impossible goal of killing all the titans in the world, but every time it's substantial and world altering plot happens, we can slowly start seeing Eren change over time. For one, the end goal of the series kept shifting and getting further away and implausible. In the beginning, we all thought the final act of Attack on Titan would be him slaying the Colossal Titan. As it turns out, the people who broke the wall are right next to him all along as fellow Titan shifters. By introducing any Reinhardt and Bothos betrayal, it became quite obvious that just killing one Titan would not fix any of their problems. To add on, the means of combat kept shifting season by season. At first, it was a human versus Titan show. Then it went Titan versus Titan and it turned into a goddamn Gundam anime. And arriving at season 3, it turned into a civil war amongst the humans to uncover the conspiracy of Paradise Island, where this all takes place. We then soon learn after the shocking truth behind Paradise Island as a whole, which becomes a shift that quakes the foundation of the show to its core. It turns out humanity is actually thriving outside the walls. Humanity is not on the verge of extinction, they are doing fine. But everybody inside the island is looked at demons because of their bloodline. The whole of humanity would feel safer if you Eldians would just disappear. We wish we could eradicate you from this world! Oh, and the Titans? Yeah. Fun fact, there are actually people at some point before they are sent on an island and turned into Titans as punishment. Another thing. That Titan that just ate Eren's mom the very first episode of the season? Turns out that was Eren's stepmom! As a reader, we consider these things very significant plot points and twists, trauma, surprises, betrayal, lordoms, and so on. But as for a person living in this world, having these events stack up one after another can shake your entire character. Everyone Eren grew up and got stronger to protect is actually hid by the entire world. Not just by a group of people, the entire world. The Titans he and others slain up to this point very well could have been his neighbor at some point. The same power Eren possesses to fight against the unfair world he just learned about is actually slowing killing him like a cancer. His enemies are no longer Titans, it's the entire fucking world. The world is no longer everybody stuck on a tiny island, but whatever they could find across the infinite sea, which no one has a single clue what that could be. Eren's reason for fighting is longer revenge, but what is that reason then? Well, welcome to season 4 then. If season 3 was the most important shift in Attack on Titan, 
season 4 wasn't most significant from even changing studios. The world itself became much less colorful and more serious as to what is about to happen. Eren Jaeger is no longer the small boy we fell in love with back in season 1. Within that time skip, Eren has become the enemy of humanity. What the world feared, he became something even scarier than that. But again, why would he do something like this? Single-handedly waging war against the entire world, committing mass genocide, killing millions upon billions of innocent people. Everyone knows what he's doing is wrong. This ties back to why he still chooses to fight. You're looking at innocent children. I... I can't do that. I'm not a monster. You're not a monster yet. Who said that? Listen, I get that. Mr. Good Guy Who Has Morals. But unfortunately, the reason for his fighting itself is quite simple. To protect everyone who grew up with on Paradise Island. But as for committing mass genocide, even the Eren we know of, this is very out of character. He phrased, the Eren we know. There are two wolves inside of me. Present Eren is the one we all know and watched from Season 1, and future Eren is the attack on Titan Quoven of Miguel O'Hara. We aren't going along with the whims of present Eren, but of uh, future Eren. Because of the attack Titan's power to see the future, present Eren already knows what's about to happen. He knows what he's going to end up doing. There's a good chance he knows how it all ends, but despite struggling against fate, he is unable to fight against his own character. His future self gave himself those memories after all. After everything that's happened at this point, he tried to find the good in humanity beyond the walls. He tried to find a way where he wouldn't commit genocide. So in the end, with all the monumental shifts and trauma he experienced in the past few seasons, it wasn't enough. He can only see so many of his precious friends die. This is the first time Aaron has first-hand experience or comprehension of xenophobia and discrimination. Despite his best trying to find an alternate solution, this was the only option that was given to him by himself from the future. His actions right now both show selfishness, greed, and self-sacrifice. He's literally committing mass genocide to protect Paradise Island while not giving a single shit about the other innocent aliens caught in the crossfire. Eren doesn't want any of his friends or family to be in harm's way, but is willing to throw away his humanity, morals, and good conscience to do so. But whether this was a part of his future foresight or not, Eren's friends and enemies don't quite like the idea of, you know, casual global manslaughter. Putting aside the differences in history, they come together in this final act because they know there's a greater wrong out there in the world right now. And the result of that is... We leave off until the finale. Everything you've seen and heard right now was previously edited, scripted, and recorded before the final part aired. I haven't even seen, watched any of the trailers for the final part. It is uninfluenced, unbiased, and not made considering what happened. Again, I don't know what is going to happen in the end. Everything from this point forward, however, is spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen the ending yet, sit your ass down and watch it before finishing this video. And you know what? While I'm plugging it anyways, why don't you go ahead and just, you know, how about you like and subscribe to this video, comment, you know, do that, all that good shit. I would really appreciate it. You should watch my other videos as well if, if you're still watching at this point. Anyways, feature me. You can go ahead and take it from here. Hey guys, oh, I'm back. back. Yeah, I'm back. So how was it? <laughs> it's an army of titans. What? Dude, what is going on? Dude, these action scenes are insane! The actual fall! <laughs> is that- is that fucking Falco?! Falco came in clutch! Get their ass, Harmon! Get their ass! <laughs> Ellie, no! Oh yeah, it was totally fine. It was, to it was totally great. I love it. Wow. Okay, um... That was a lot to process, and honestly, I'm still feeling some of the whiplash. But, the video must go on. So, I'm dividing the rest of this into three parts. The first one being Eren's final swan dive. I'm not here to talk about the insane action sequences or Tim's final battle, because we can all agree 
That was fucking awesome! But when I started working on this script a few months ago, in my head it was a risky yet relatively safe move to primarily focus on Eren. Oh, I know, focusing on the main protagonist, who knew? Albeit now, that I know what happened, it was the correct move. Although it was very subtle in the beginning, Eren was not your average main protagonist. And I would argue his upbringing in his earliest stage of life, back when Titans eating him, was all he ever had to worry about is the main cause of his uniqueness. Back before the first wall was destroyed, he was not content with his current way of life, even then. He felt trapped inside the walls, he wanted to do more, be more, you know, just something, causing him to develop a somewhat rebellious nature and desire for true freedom. Whatever the fuck true freedom is. At the end of Season 3, when you touch the story's hand, it marked the beginning of something quite unfathomable. Being cursed with its future memories, it is actually quite an interesting tale of irony. While this quest for true freedom is now boxed by all of the world's hatred towards Eldians, his acquisition of freedom is quite contradictory when you look at the big picture. For one, we need to all agree and understand that once the future was laid out, it was unchangeable. It was destiny. Nothing could prevent the inevitable. Despite all this, once he actually started rumbling and took his founding titan form, his craving for true freedom was somehow actually satisfied. Even though his free will essentially disappeared by being bound to a set outcome, he he found this state to be freedom. Why? As Aaron himself states, he is a slave to freedom. His state of euphoria should be fundamentally impossible. Many people have their own interpretations to being a slave to freedom, which I have viewed as I try to understand what in the ever-loving fuck this meant. But I think I have arrived at my own independent answer. It was too much of a good thing. People like beer. Others love it. And some people end up pissed pants drunk covered in pumpkin scent and lube to only wake up and wonder how the hell they ended up in a zoo's penguin exhibit. There's a healthy amount to drinking. There's a healthy amount to eating. Sex and lust. Even something relatively healthy as exercising, but too much can be just as detrimental. For Eren, this is freedom, or lack thereof. He wants to be the freest motherfucker out there in the world, unbound by any wall except future fate. For his own sake, he was mother out others' freedom for his own like a gluttonous pig. But he can't get enough. It is never enough. And once he starts rumbling, to watch others' free will be taken from them, as it gets washed like bugs, it puts him in a hiding ceiling of ecstasy that was all before unknown to him. All this because he knows he can never have freedom. If he can't have it, no one can. At least, that's the conclusion I arrived at. There are probably some holes in it, but I'm fairly happy with it. And whether it was intentional or not by the author, this was an interesting rabbit hole to dive in. Never mind. Manga readers are still pissed the fuck off at the manga. Uh, let me see. Now, I have my own issues with the ending, which I will discuss in a bit, but in my head, the public outcry over the ending was way overblown. So, I had to dig deep into the internet to see what people are actually mad about, and I have arrived at these main topics. 1. Eren's character assassination. A lot of people are saying that Eren's character was inconsistent and as a whole, ruined in his final scenes. Honestly, I do not see where people are coming from or why they're upset. From his breakdown over Mikasa to his end goal with the rumbling, it made sense to me given his history. In my head, Eren was still and will always be a rebellious teenager who enforces himself against others' free will, causing forced reaction while never thinking about the consequences of his actions. I'm not going to deep dive here, but I think people expected Eren to be more masterful and at peace with his plan, what they did not expect was a 19 year old to have an emotional outburst knowing what he is forfeiting, with us the watchers knowing what kind of trauma and changes he has faced, and being confronted by Armin about what a massive mistake 
he is making. And my head and emotional outburst totally makes sense here. Two, Armin's character assassination. Um, speaking of Armin, uh, people were also upset over his final meeting with Eren, which frankly across both the manga and the anime, even while having slight changes from one another, I agree that they kind of fucked with Armin's character here. In the manga, Armin straight up goes, Thank you for committing mass genocide for us. I won't let your sacrifice go to waste. The anime ended up changing this to him, sympathizing with Eren on wanting to commit genocide. Armin putting himself down for dreaming about possibilities about outside of the wall, taking some of the blame, and then telling Eren he will meet him in hell. I don't think I need to explain why this is bad for Amon's character, so I'll just move on to the next complaint. 3. A better plan. Another thing that caused a lot of controversy was Eren's plan itself. Sure, there had to be a better way to go about things, but with how things were set in the universe, there really wasn't any other solutions. Even per se, in one theory, Eren starts rumbling and seals everybody's ability to transform into titans to guarantee victory. The rest of the world is flattened. Eldians are the only one who remains. The power of the Titans still exists in this theoretical world. Eren does not have the ability to straight up erase the power of Titans. That was only up to Ymir, which was most likely only possible through this path. In addition, Eren is not a massive planner. As I already said, he doesn't think things through. Most of the time, other people deal with the consequences of his actions. So when he sees a future memory of him committing genocide, it is very difficult to resist himself against himself. In addition, a lot of flack has been thrown at the author for not using the godlike powers as the creator of the series to will in a better plan and thus a better ending. This... Honestly, I can understand the argument. But this is absolutely overblown and does not warrant the manga feeling as if they have to fucking apologize. Could we have a better happier ending. Yeah, and we have a similar ending to what we have now, but with better execution. Probably. Is this an ending to get mad about? Hell fucking no. 4. A longer farewell. These last two complaints are fairly self-explanatory, so I'll keep them short. For one, I think everyone wanted a longer farewell scene. The final bit felt somewhat rushed, and on a personal note, I wish we got more of a grand goodbye to Eren. From what I saw, this was a somewhat minor critique, but I just a fight one. And finally, five. Final end cards. This is another thing that changed from manga to anime. In the anime, they showed centuries of passing of peace on Paradeville. Wait, did I just witness anime 911? Excuse Sorry, I got sidetracked. Anyways, as I was saying in the anime, Eren's peace for Paradise Island lasted for centuries at a time between intermediate wars and fights before it eventually succumbed to nuclear fallout. However, in the manga, this era of peace seemed to be only for uh, the very max a century or so, making everything seem inconsequential as Eren's sacrifice barely lasted a generation. With everything taken account for, did the ending ruin Attack on Titan? FUCK NO! At least in my head, Attack on Titan created a huge name for itself that set extremely high expectations, and when expectations fell short, people lost their shit. Although the ending isn't perfect, I think people are forgetting this is a good ending. It didn't take away from my enjoyment of watching the final part, but more importantly, it tied up all necessary descents. If you watch this trying to figure out if you should watch Attack on Titan, honestly this was a very bad video to watch, but I wouldn't let anyone dictate that this isn't something worth watching if you want to dive into this world. I still think Attack on Titan is a very good series to watch. Like it or not, Attack on Titan was. No, Attack on Titan is a massive, influential, well-loved, and even though divisive at the end, something that people will never forget. I feel proud for the fact that I was here since damn near the beginning of the anime, and I was with everybody at the very end. This has been a part of my so far short life, for so long, and I have really felt this excited every time a new episode dropped. I knew about the manga, but I also knew that something like Attack of Titan is rare, and the feeling of watching something like it would not come again in a long time. I am happy. I'm sad. I'm calm yet bouncing off the walls. I am just as passionate as ever. I already feel nostalgic. I know this is cheesy for me to say, 
but sometimes the journey is just as much a part of the story as the ending. In hell, what a journey it has been. I really can't put in any other words than thank you, Attack on Titan. I was proud to be on a journey, fellas! I was proud! Bye, Aaron. That's <laughs> 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 actually wrong for that. <laughs> I haven't watched the finale. I haven't watched the finale, but I know I know how it ends because of the manga. <laughs> I just that that one word. Bye, Aaron. I'm not a smart man. Bye, guys. That's good for me, man. Bye.